Hello everyone and welcome back to another Animal Artists Collective video. The AAC is an initiative founded by Denise Soden and Jennifer Charlie here on YouTube to raise awareness about animal conservation through education and art. Each piece created for each AAC theme is available for purchase with half the proceeds going to animal conservation and welfare. Our theme for September is temperate forests and I've decided to highlight a very tiny creature facing very big problems, the northern long-eared myotis. Bats are mammals of the order Chiroptera, which is the second largest order of mammals comprising about 20% of all classified mammal species. They are the only mammals ever to have evolved powered flight, which they did in the early Cenozoic. The earliest bat is Icarinicterus index from 52.2 million years ago, and we have a cast of an Icarinicterus fossil at the museum where I work and it's basically already a bat. The curator of fossil mammals there says there is no clear preservation of any sort of in-between bat, any mammal with slightly shorter digits that might have evolved into wings. The first thing we really get is already a bat um, once we get it. Obviously there must be an evolutionary history there, but until we find well-preserved specimens of pre-bat bats, uh, we just won't know how they got in the air. I actually got another request to do a bat painting while I was planning this AAC video, and that'll be coming out in an upcoming issue of Canadian Geographic. I did an infographic for them about little brown bats, which are closely related to the long-eared myotis here. I thought it would be nice to do more of a portrait. Um, I was having a rough time with the bat's entire body in this particular pose. They're very strange looking creatures and their legs are, are difficult to get right um, because, I don't know, they don't really look right. So I focused on doing a portrait of the bat's face mostly and his uh, big ears, which he gets the name from. The insect that he's eating because uh, a lot of bats are insectivores is a once married underwing, a type of moth, and I thought the orange would be a nice color to add to the painting um, and sort of base the rest of the color scheme around. So it ended up being quite a brown painting, um, brown with a little bit of neutral here and there um, and a little bit of yellow and pink, but I think it's nice that way and I like how the granulation turned out in the background of the painting. Um, from the initial layers of watercolor. I set it up in watercolor and did my underpainting in watercolor and then most of it is finished in gouache which allows me to do some nice dry brushing on the fur texture that you'll see throughout. The northern long-eared myotis has been afflicted by white nose syndrome in both Canada and the United States along with many other bat species. White nose syndrome is caused by a fungus called Pseudogymnoascus destructens, which colonizes the bat's skin. White nose syndrome disrupts hibernating bat's torpor and causes dehydration, which has led to a 99% decrease in certain bat populations. It's really difficult to imagine how another organism could evolve to be so specifically detrimental to bats like this. The problem with evolution is that it's not based on logic. There isn't a guiding hand in all of it. Even Darwin mentions checks that destroy individuals and keep populations under control, but even that suggests a sort of ulterior motive for nature, in my opinion, which there isn't. There's no reason for this fungus to be successful, just that it is, and colonizing the bats has allowed it to propagate. There is work being done to combat white nose syndrome. Scientists can apply an antifungal spray to cave walls where bats hibernate, or install ultraviolet lights to flash the bats as they enter and exit their roosts, killing the fungus with UV rays. Caving in areas where bats hibernate is discouraged if white nose syndrome is present, and if you cave recreationally it's important to thoroughly clean all of your equipment to avoid carrying the fungus from an infected cave to another cave that might not have been infected if it weren't for you. Bats are tiny, and just like it's hard to get a good fossil of them, I bet it's difficult to tell where they're all hibernating, so we can't possibly help every single bat. 
And that's not the point either. Combating white nose syndrome is not about curing it, but about making sure that bat populations can continue to survive this difficult time in their history. One video can only ever scrape the surface of such a complicated biological subject too, but there's good work being done out there, and I hope this painting helps raise a little awareness about our tiny flying friends and dispel some of the stigma around what are traditionally seen as creepy critters. Bats are good, after all. Many species are insectivores, and they help control insect populations. I was out camping and I saw tons of little bats whizzing around at night catching bugs. They're wonderfully adept in the air. They can fly right past your head and take a 90 degree turn away. They're great, terrifically specialized animals, and I hope you enjoy this portrait that I made. If you'd like to buy this piece, you can purchase it on Etsy via the link in the description below. Half of the proceeds will be donated to Nature Conservancy of Canada, who have initiatives to combat white nose syndrome in Canadian bats. I've also included a link to whitenosesyndrome.org where you can find a lot of useful educational materials. As always, thanks for watching and make sure to check out the other artists' AAC videos for this month.